7 o'clock. <laughs> we are going to call the Hadley Conservation Commission meeting to order. I am Paulette Kasteba. I am the chair of the commission. And we will be opening a notice of intent public hearing for the Lake Warner LLC, who seeks to repair the dam at Lake Warner at 221 and 223 River Drive and 2 Hibbard Lane. If you have not signed in, please make sure you sign in on the clipboard. Good evening. My name is Jason Johnson. I'm the executive director of the Friends of Lake Warner. Um, Kristen DeVore just called me and said that she got in her car accident. Um, oh, no. So she's okay. She can probably be a little bit late if you have any questions for her, but she sends her apologies. Yeah. So the reason that this is opening up is because of some of safety issues for the dam. Um, in town meeting, CPA money was approved. To, uh, to fund the proposal, and money has been raised by both the Friends of Lake Warner and Kester Land Trust, as well as um, state money from Representative Side. So that's why this is being presented to you. And Morris Luke from Luke Engineering is here. Sign from Stanford. Present the order. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, thank you very much. Um, just a couple of administrative items first. So we notify the butters to the project by a certificate of mailing, so this deliver that to you. Thank you. And also, we've got some copies of the photographs that were submitted with the NOI, just to pass out so folks can follow along. Okay, thank you. I actually just want to pass those around. There, are, there should be plenty of copies. If anybody in the audience would like one of that afterwards. Uh, and then the other item to present is the uh, signature from one of the property owners involved in the memorandum of oh, understanding regarding property, owner, property access. Okay. So, uh, as Jason mentioned, the, uh, the purpose of this project is to conduct repairs to the Lake Warner Dam, uh, basically for, for public safety to maintain the dam uh, in, in good order. Um, the the uh, Dam owners, Kestrel Land Trust uh, and Lake Warner LSD, were issued a uh, dam safety order back in 2011, was it, Morris? 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. Essentially citing deficiencies with the structure of the dam and also noting that there was excessive woody vegetation around the dam uh, and, uh, and uh, basically stating that the dam needed to be repaired uh, to be brought back into compliance. Um, so one other item is that uh, there was uh, a fee submitted for the project, then it was later determined that an additional fee was required, so there's another $475 check that will be issued to the commission that was just not be able, was not able to be prepared uh, in time for this hearing. So, um, essentially, if you take a look at this figure here, uh, this shows the project area outlined in red. This is basically where work activities will occur. We've got River Drive here, Route 47, Mount Warner Road. Uh, so again, the red is the actual work areas. This yellow area is the proposed staging area, which is in the lawn of Beverly Roads, uh, private landowner here at 2 Hibbard Lane. And then this purple area is proposed location for dewatering discharge for the work. So basically in this area here, there's a grass lawn, uh, and that will be where the, uh, the filter bag is placed that uh, dewatering water will be pumped to and uh, allowed to filter out of that bag in, into the lawn there. So um, <clears throat> this shows the general work site. Flipping this around, you can see that the project is within uh, areas mapped as priority and estimated habitat by Natural Heritage. Um, we submitted the NOI to Natural Heritage and prior to that submitted an information request to them. They came back with wood turtle being the species of concern there. Uh, I reached out to Misty Ann Merrill, who is the person who's going to be assigned to the review of this to discuss the project with her and, and find out what her concerns were related to the project. And she essentially said that due to the timing of the project, which I'll get into later, and the, the scope of the work, that she didn't have uh, concerns about that species being impacted. So the work is proposed to occur during the, the low flow season of the summer months, which will be July, or in water work, I should say, from July 1st to September 30th, uh, with some uh, prep and uh, then breakdown happening on, on either end of that. So um, the other uh, 
rare species issue that was involved with the project is uh, for the northern long-eared bat, which is a recently federally listed species. Um, that's associated with uh, projects that have a federal nexus, so this project is going to require uh, consultation with the Army Corps of Engineers. A project uh, self-verification notification form will be submitted to them. And once there's a federal nexus, and uh, uh, that requires, because there's going to be tree cutting, it requires uh, consultation with U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Um, essentially, the bats are tree, tree roosters during the, the warmer months of the year, but also uh, uh, hide out in caves or, or other places uh, out of the trees during the cold months of the year. So basically we explained that the project is proposing to remove the trees that need to be cut to gain access to the dam um, during the, the allowable work window, which would be before April 15th. So citing that, um, Susie Van Ottingen of U.S. Fish and Wildlife is the person that I spoke with and she said that she had no concerns about the species being impacted since, since we'd be doing the work within that window. So. What the project is going to entail is uh, essentially repair of existing concrete portions of the dam, uh, some refreshment of some existing stone armoring alongside the dam, and uh, replacement of the low-level gate and operator, and also to remove uh, a relic feature, which is the stone or uh, concrete deflector wall, and then some vegetation management. So this figure here. One of the plan sheets essentially shows the work area. Uh, the gray areas are where the concrete work is going to happen, so it's essentially the upstream face of the dam, and then some of the training walls here. This feature here is that deflector wall. Um, if we go to photo two, you can see the deflector wall that's sort of jutting out away from the dam. That's going to be demolished and, and removed. It's essentially a, a, a relic feature that doesn't serve a purpose anymore. So all of the work associated with the actual dam repairs are going to be associated with uh, bank land underwater uh, and a small amount of uh, bordering land subject to flooding. So the bank impacts will essentially be repairs of the existing concrete walls. That's, that's the bank that will be impacted. And also up in this area here, which is shown on another plan, we'll get into that, is where there's an existing area of stone scour protection that's just basically going to be pulled back and refreshed as needed by placing some new riprap in that area. Uh, other work that's jurisdictional and uh, within the uh, jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission is the, the site access preparation that's going to occur from, from this side of the dam, which will uh, require, as I mentioned, some clearing of vegetation, some grading to basically allow the big machinery that's needed to perform the repairs to get down in there. Also, the staging area, which was again shown here in yellow, is within the 200-foot riverfront area, and the dewatering discharge location is also within the 200-foot riverfront area. Uh, essentially, all of the work that's going to occur is going to be replacing uh, in kind the, the, part, the portions of the dam and the places uh, outside of the bank and land underwater where the, the uh, other activities, staging and dewatering air will occur, will be temporary impacts associated with just tra uh, driving over the land and the placement of uh, uh, equipment and uh, materials temporarily, and also the dewatering will be very temporary impact there. So the project uh, qualifies for consideration as a limited project as it uh, consists of the in-kind replacement of a dam. Um, work will be uh, will need to uh, occur within the 35 foot no disturb zone identified in the Hadley bylaw. So we need to request a variance for that because essentially to access the dam, uh, we need to cut trees and, and do some grading to basically access the work area. So let me just flip figures here. This plan sheet shows the existing conditions of the dam and surrounding areas. Uh, the, the staging area and the dewatering didn't fit within the plan sheet here, but again, they're shown on that figure there, so if you have any questions, we can, we can discuss those. So in blue is shown the limit of bank in Menial High Water, which were coincident. There. It's basically a deeply incised channel of the river there, so those are both coincident. So 100-foot uh, buffer zone and 200-foot riverfront area are cost, cast off of this blue line. So what we've got is essentially, as you saw in that last feature figure, where there was the, uh, the gray portions of the dam, it's the existing training walls, the uh, spillway and dam structure itself, another training wall on this side, and then this is an old sluiceway which runs partly below this uh, structure here, which is the former mill building there. So what's going to need to be replaced or repaired again is basically concrete work on the, these training walls here, removal of this uh, deflector wall, 
uh, basically casting a concrete membrane on that upstream face of the dam, and then more concrete work here. This hatched area here is that area where there is some stone scour protection, riprap essentially, and that's going to be replaced as needed. So the, uh, the work area is, is here essentially, but to gain access from the dam, um, the, the work area is going to also include a uh, portion of this area here, which is off of uh, Route 47 there, and anything worth discussing more than that. But this sheet here shows the proposed work. Um, in yellow is the limit of work that's shown, and again, the concrete repairs, the actual dam work is all down here within the river. Um, this area up here is going to be the primary uh, access and construction operations site. So basically, there are approximately 10 or 12 trees, mature trees, that are going to need to be cut within this area here. There's actually one that's growing within uh, a rubble wall or a little concrete wall here on the edge of the spruceway. And then there's another pine here. It's, uh, I believe, a 36 or 38 inch pine that's leaning over the river and dropping a lot of debris into the river and it's affecting maintenance of the dam is basically causing a hazard. So um, what the plan would be would be to cut the trees that are needed to be cut uh, within that time of year work window for the northern longyear bat, which would again be before April 15th, cutting the trees that need to be cut in this area here, also this one in here, and then basically uh, the work would then cease until uh, we got to that low flow period of July 1st. Prior to that, some uh, site preparations would occur, basically establishment of the erosion control, sediment barrier would go in, uh, that's shown by a dark line here, and then basically wrapping around the entire work area. Um, at that time when we actually begin site preparations for the work in late June, essentially, uh, likely to be happening, they would actually grub the stumps that needed to be grubbed in here and do start to do some of the grading and build basically a protected uh, stone ramp, a temporary stone ramp into this area so that machinery can move in and out as needed. Uh, the idea is that likely a contractor, and this will all be means and methods of the contractor, but it would be likely that a crane situated up in this portion of the site would be used to do the, the bulk of the work, um, to be bringing in concrete, to demolish things that need to be demolished, uh, and to basically facilitate moving equipment in and out. So crane situated roughly up here, a uh, stone access pad would be through this area, again temporary to allow an excavator or other machinery as needed to access down along the edge of this training wall here. Uh, and then the excavator would be used for uh, as needed to <coughs> conduct the repairs to replace that stone here. Um, so the way that this is proposed to be done is with a phased coffer dam system. So the, the work will be done um, with the dewatered work area and uh, it's going to be done in a two-phase coffer dam is what we're proposing to allow the, the flow of the river to be maintained throughout the project so at no time that the river will be ceased from flowing over the dam. So essentially what we show here is within the, the work area, this sort of zigzag line here on the plan shows the phase one limits of the coffer dam and then the phase two wraps around this way. <clears throat> So essentially what would happen would be, again, cutting the trees in April, come back in, in the late June or other time in the summer months there to begin the site prep work. Once that uh, July 1st window opens up, that the contractor would be allowed to en enter the river once they're prepared to and uh, do the in-river work. So essentially, before st any stumps are grubbed and things like that, they would install a sediment uh, barrier around the work area to basically enclose this portion of the site. We're also proposing to use some sandbags up at the top of the site to just limit storm water from flowing onto this disturbed disturb area to limit erosion and sedimentation within the work area here. Um, so once the, the coffer dam, again this phase one coffer dam would go in, the area in this phase one area would be dewatered by pumping the water by a hose underneath the uh, Mount Warner Road bridge there to this dewatering discharge location that's up in uh, the Green Bomb, Green Bombs uh, residence property up here in that lawn. So once this area is dewatered, um, if there is and there is anticipated to, be, anticipated to be some amount of accumulated sediment within this area that would be removed and disposed off-site by the contractor, uh, then they would come in and be able to do the concrete repairs um, and uh, another small coffer dam would be likely in place around the uh, deflector wall here 
to basically you know, use machinery to demolish this, this section of concrete that's shown in figure two there. The coffer dam here would be to prevent any water backing up on the site, but also just to define the limit of work and catch any of the you know, bits of concrete that may fall into this area. Once this is knocked down, that would just be pulled out by a machine and disposed off site as well. Um, so, uh, again, repairs to the concrete would be happening with phase one, also replacement of the low-level outlet gate and the sluice gate operator, which is basically the big crank over on this side of the dam would occur, um, refreshing the riprap, and then once that all takes place, um, the engineer, Morris Root, would come and, uh, and do an inspection to make sure everything had been done satisfactorily. Following uh, completion of phase one work, they would begin installation of the phase two coffer dam across the river here. And to do that, there is this existing rubble wall here, which is shown in, please bear with me. If you can find it in the photos before I can, I will get to it. Last page? Photograph yeah. one on the last page. Yeah, which should be photograph nine, I believe. So yes, yeah, photograph uh, one and two showed basically this area over here, the old sluice way. So in that photograph one, you can see the rubble wall looks like uh, a concrete cap potentially on top of dilapidated masonry. Mm -hmm. So in order to get the coffer dam through that section and to bring it all the way across, a portion of that wall will need to be demolished. Uh, it's anticipated to either be done by hand, uh, using hand tools, or potentially um, using the crane with a, with a clamshell type bucket, basically grab onto that and bring it out of the work area, and that'll facilitate bringing that uh, coffer dam all the way across there. So before the coffer dam is brought completely across, the plan would be to lower this section of the phase one coffer dam to the elevation of the dam, to, of the spillway. So basically, as this section continues across and isolates this whole area here, this, this portion of the dam would function as the spillway and would maintain a consistent water level rather than having to go back and manually operate the, this loose gate. So because the, the water level can fluctuate when you're, when you're operating the gate, someone would actually have to go back and, and fiddle with it to make it stay at the right level. By establishing a consistent level that's, that's uh, in line with the elevation of the spillway there, it will function to basically act as a spillway and maintain the water level of the lake. Um, so essentially, um, once once that is done and this this area has been dewatered, again pumping it to the same location up in the, the Green Bombs uh, property there, similar work would occur here where it's going to be um, replacing or installing a new concrete membrane which is basically a new concrete facing on the back of the dam which is going to plug up the leaks that are in there make it so it doesn't continue to deteriorate um, and then additional concrete work on these uh, the training walls on the uh, left side of the dam so following the completion of the, oh, I should also mention Within this area here, backed up on the dam, uh, Mr. Root anticipates that there may be 30 to 40 cubic yards of sediment that will need to be removed and disposed by the contractor. And again, that's anticipated to be done likely uh, with the use of, of the crane clamshell bucket or could be done with an excavator, um, at least in this phase one area. Um, we have included in the, in the plan sheets the potential for a, a, a temporary fill access to be in place into the river here during phase one activities, which would basically be once this area is dewatered, uh, clean fill would be used to basically build a ramp down or potentially a little platform that, a, that an excavator or other machinery could actually drive onto and remain at essentially a level height here with um, you know, the, the uplands and be able to, to reach as needed. That's, that's something that we built in if the contractor should need to do it. Um, before this area was allowed to refill, all of that fill material would be excavated and, and removed out so it would be back flush with the original uh, water level or the uh, bottom of the river there. So following uh, completion of the, uh, the concrete repairs and everything else that I've discussed here, um, which again would be completed by September 30th uh, in order to comply with the Army Corps regulations. Um, it would essentially be Morris would come in and do his second round inspection, making sure all the work had been done uh, as per the specs, and then basically backing out of the site, uh, slowly removing portions of the coffer dam 
and uh, basically coming back out of the site and regrading to m match existing grades and installing uh, erosion control, blankets, seating, and mulching as necessary. Uh, because the, the Office of Dam Safety regulations state that woody vegetation is supposed to be kept away from, from the dam, we're not proposing to replant any woody vegetation in this. It'll all be native herbaceous is what we're proposing uh, because essentially the, the woody uh, roots will work their way into the concrete or into the structure and cause more problems later down the road. So in order to be compliant with that and also to maintain access in the future, the proposition would be to simply maintain this with uh, herbaceous vegetation, which would then be, and also we've requested this in the NOI to uh, basically to allow um, Lake Warner LLC to mow, the, mow this area you know, at least once a year. Um, <clears throat> so again, in river work, July 1st to September 30th, uh, and then potentially a week or so of preparations on either end of that for the uh, preparation of access and demobilization. And uh, that's essentially the project. So there will be certainly some turbidity generated by these activities, especially during, it's likely that it would happen anyway, during the installation of the coffer dam. But since this is going to be you know, stirring up of sediments that are already in the river, we don't feel that that will be a negative impact to the waterway, to the resource area versus, you know, foreign sediments being washed in from another portion of the site. Um, Morris, would you like to add anything to that? No. I'll just wait for questions if okay. there are any. Um, <coughs> that is it in a nutshell, but since we have the, the photos passed out here, if I can just walk you through those. So, looking at the first photograph there, we're seeing the sector residence, which is the former mill building. Uh, you can see the spillway of the dam and the old sluiceway, as well as that single nine-inch willow that's actually growing out of that rubber wall, rubble wall there. It will need to be removed. Uh, photograph two shows um, a portion of the upland work area and also that deflector wall that's going to be removed. Can I stop you on that sure. one? Just a couple questions on these two. One, um, on photograph one, you show, you state that you need to have a cofferdam go through that rubble wall there. Mm -hmm. When we look at the picture of what that wall looks like, um, if that is <coughs> photograph one. Um, yeah, it should, should be photograph the last nine. Two photos. The last two photographs. Yes. They're pretty broken right now. I mean, there's cracks going right down them. Are, are you proposing to have those removed and repaired or replaced? Um, what exactly is being done with those right there? So this wall, this, this loose way is not functioning anymore, so the, the wall doesn't, this rubble wall, as we call it, doesn't serve a purpose anymore. So the, the plan would be to simply remove the section that's necessary for installing the coffer dam, and then once the coffer dam is, is taken out, to not repair that wall since it doesn't serve a purpose okay. anymore. So is the entire rubble wall or the that area going to be removed so that you don't have it falling in or mm -hmm. causing a blockage uh, down as the of, road or? As of right now, we're, we're proposing to leave the, the other portions of the wall intact. I mean, as you can see uh, in photograph one there, there's actually, you know, the sediment that's accumulated on the bottom of the river sort of tapers up to the edge of that wall and there's actually a tree that's growing there. So mm -hmm. it would indicate that there's, you know, there is river bottom near the edges of that wall. So uh, it it's, wasn't a concern of ours that the wall would become destabilized to the point that it would collapse further. Um, that said, during the demo demolition of the section of the wall, any, any portions of that concrete or stone that fall down into the river would either be retrieved at that time or once the air area is dewatered. Okay, and then in photograph two, mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at, you can see the dam, but then if you look as if you're coming closer to you, um, standing at the road, it looks like there's water coming out of the culvert. The water that's in the, sa in the same direction of the, right. That's actually the, the low level outlet gate. Uh, 
So, so basically, that's that's leaking right now, and that'll be replaced so that there won't be water coming out of that unless. Okay, it's, so that's not a culvert. It's a it's a that's gate a, valve. That's a component of the dam. So that would be basically within this section of the dam here, and that is allowing water to pass through here. And that's basically if you if you needed to do a drawdown of the lake, <clears throat> crank that thing all the way open, and then it basically lowers the spillway to that low level outlet so then it allows the lake to drain down to the level of okay, that. Okay, and where is the intake of that located? It would be right on the other side of that wall. Just on the other side of that yep. wall. And is there going to be any repair done in, I know you said you're going to replace um, the valve. The, the gate so that and, the, and the, the gate operator, So yeah. that it can open and close. Um, do you need to go in and do any work within that wall or are you just going to be um, I guess how are you? How is that going to happen? Um, <coughs> Morris could probably speak more to the to the details of, of the specifics of the work. But again, this that area is right here, the dam. So as you can see from the, the gray shaded area, those are all areas that where concrete repairs need to happen. Okay. Um, so as far where is as that located? Th this this that low level of the gate is here. So we're okay, that, that it photo looks like from the picture it's on the back oh, I'm side sorry, I'm of sorry. here. Okay. It, it would be here. Okay. Yes, you're right. Yeah, the, the dashed lines indicate basically okay. where that comes through. So that photo that we're looking at comes, comes right. through there. Yeah. So as far as um, inner workings of the repair there, if you have anything to add to that. Well, yeah. Well, I don't know how much engineering detail you want to dive into, but uh, I would direct your attention into the plans. Uh, on sheet eight of the plans. Uh, what sheet? Number eight. Okay. Uh, your question is, you know, what's going to happen with that conduit that comes right. through the wall? And the detail as to what's going to happen there is that detail yeah. that's shown on the upper left hand corner I should yeah. get. So essentially what's going to happen is the um, we're going to be facing over the existing concrete mm -hmm. to hold it all together. <clears throat> and then through that existing waterway, which okay, goes from the gate on the upstream side to the outlet here where you see the water leak now. We'll be putting in a steel liner. Okay. Yep. You can see the mm -hmm. half-inch steel plate. Correct. Okay. And you know, then that will essentially be grouted in place, um, and then refurbishing the existing timber gate on the upstream side. It's going to be wood gate. That's what's there now. <laughs> oh. Okay. We figure it's going to be an economical. We're trying to do our best to you know reuse and recycle. Uh, it's there are a lot of that we'll use. Yeah, but um, are you finished with your presentation? There are some concerns that I have. And at any time during the process of this refurbishing, I live upstream on Mill River, and okay. I know and I know other farms use the Mill River as an irrigation source. Okay. Is there going to be any drastic differences in the height of the pond, which will affect the Mill River, because? People need it for uh, need at, need it for access for irrigation for their crops. Right. Okay. If I understand the correction the question correctly, you say you're upstream <coughs> from the dam. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you're essentially accessing Lake Warren. No. To draw water. No. We're 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 accessing the the Mill River that flows into Lake Warner. The source. The source the of Lake, Lake Warner. Warner. Uh, above above that, no, we're not going to be doing anything. And so e that. even within the lake itself, we're not proposing to lower the water levels at all. It, I mean, the level of the lake is determined by the height of the spillway. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. basically what we had mentioned with the, the phase coffer dam there is that we'll, we'll be lowering the, that section of the phase one coffer dam to the same elevation 128, which is the same as the elevation of the spillway. So basically it will maintain that, that we're doing that specifically so that there's not a, uh, a reduction of the level of the, of the lake. Okay. What is your coffer dam? made yeah. of and how is it being installed that will be left up to the to the contractor and i mean they will be required to comply with with the permits and with the specifications that mr root has put together um, potential materials that could be used would be uh, steel sheet piling 
just essentially uh, similar to that zigzag pattern that you've right. seen there, and those lock together, slide into place. Uh, ported but that dam, you have to be able to, to drive into, drive into right. it. So, so. so, so that will be determined when the contractor gets there if there will be a feasible uh, means to do that. Uh, other other options would be a quarter dam, which is essentially a braced uh, steel framework with essentially a, a waterproof membrane on the upstream face of that. Um, and then uh, sandbags would be another potential option there. And we've, we basically, know, knowing that we were unsure of the material that would be used for the copper dam, we allowed enough room with the work area so that if it does have to be, um, you know, sandbags, which would be wider, or, or a porter dam, which would be wider than a you know, very narrow sheet piling there, we've given ourselves enough room with the work area to allow those different types of materials to be used so that we won't have to come back to you and say, oops, we're going to need more room. Mm -hmm. So if they choose to do the uh, steel <coughs> copper dam and have to drive it, the sheet metal, will they have to do or will they do borings? beforehand to find out what they're going into or do you know what it will be driven into? It's not anticipated <laughs> that they will be doing borings in advance. It is, I mean, I think the point that you're driving at is that it's fairly evident that lake is pretty shallow in this location. Mm -hmm. um, but the contractor may end up having to do with perhaps, in fact, install two walls so that there is, you know, support for that, mm -hmm. or one wall with some shoring behind it in order to support it. Um, it's under, you know, it's a, it's a difficult situation there because the depth of the water, as it is today, what we want to pre preserve, you know, the normal functional mm -hmm. lake as much as possible, is really deeper than what you can comfortably work with with Porta Dam. So. It really seems like, using the words loosely, we're stuck with working with uh, steel sheeting. And so it's a matter of building sheet wall and then figuring out what we're going to have to use for beams, shoring, doubling it up, uh, a lot of details that are going to be worked out with the contractor's means and methods. Okay. Because I, I, I mean, speaking for myself, I would want, as a member of the Conservation Commission, to see the design and how it's going to be installed um, prior to any type of construction going forward. Okay. Uh, you know, be well, to present it to the commission. Okay. Uh, I think, you know, the process, you know, you know just let's fast forward if mm -hmm. we can. For us to bid the project, we need an order of conditions. We have no right. problem complying with your request because typically right. not only you but the Office of Dam Safety says we, we'd like we to know what's to going it. on right. and um, typically you know we can get that kind of information from the contractor they will produce a nice little book and show mm -hmm. you what's going on. Right I think I would want to have that as one of our <coughs> orders of conditions in there that hmm? it would have to come back to the Commission or at least show us the design yeah. of what's going to happen in there. Okay. Um, yeah. Because my other, down. the other issue that I was looking at regarding the coffer dam is when you put in phase two, you're substantially reducing the spillway, the cross section of the spillway. Mm -hmm. So, how is that going to be affected with? Um, any type if we have storms. I mean, we, we have summers that are either mm -hmm. extremely um, dry or we've had them where they're extremely wet. And if hopefully we won't have one that's extremely wet, how is that going to affect this and what is the potential for impact downstream? Okay, uh, I think some of the questions that you're raising are, are excellent points. And can be addressed in the contractor's presentation. I, I don't want to take away from the contractor, but I can just put a couple of ideas before you so that you can understand. Um, because, um, oh, maybe I should jump on. Sure, might <laughs> as well. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Um, 
So, I mean, your point, I mean, it's the phase two that is going to be most problematic. And mm -hmm. I'm going to be looking at, you know, we want to protect, you know, what's going on within a construction project, but we also don't want to lose sight that we have James and Jeanette Sector's house mm -hmm. <laughs> right here, right, right on the dam. Mm -hmm. And even though we have a nice lawn here, we have some elevations here that if we get the water too high, mm -hmm. uh, the tenants <coughs> in the, the Bosford's house right. are not going to be happy either. Right. And you uh, have we a understand that. Building right there too, so at the edge. Yeah, okay. The garage. So now I'm going to just start throwing a bunch of elevations around mm -hmm. with numbers because I'm an engineer. Uh, anyhow. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> the point where we could have some issues. Uh, interestingly, James Sector, when he rebuilt his house, mm -hmm. did, what, did some interesting bits of flood proofing so that the concrete actually goes up beneath what you see otherwise as the wood siding. Right. And it goes almost up to the window sills. I've had some conversation with Mr. Sector about that. Which coincidentally happens to be about the same elevation as the low line over here, which comes out to be like an elevation of 133.6. Uh, we can do a couple of things here. Number one, of course, what it's all about is controlling the height that the contractor uses in the sheet steels mm -hmm. so that we don't create the obstruction, which is a concern. Um, not shown here, but one thought I have had would perhaps require a supplemental row of sheeting coming through here and essentially keep the primary row here, which would be just about a foot and three inches above the existing water level in the lake, bringing it up to an elevation like 129.5. <coughs> if we do that, um, trying to recall my notes, okay. Uh, we can pass a major flood, you know, comparable to what James has experienced. He said that in the 20 years he's lived there, he hasn't seen much more than five or six inches of water over this concrete work over on this side. But we can keep the elevations to below that elevation, like 132.75, which gives us almost a foot difference between the point where we're putting water through the windows at their house, which is above their flood proofing. So, if we keep this low enough, then we can be protected against you know, damaging these properties during a major storm event. Um, what so would that do to the work that's being done there? Okay. Um, what I'm doing, you know, and what this raises here is, as I say, separate. What we'd have a row of sheeting here and another row of sheeting here. So that this work area would be protected because you go to the plans, mm -hmm. there's some areas right in here where the concrete is pretty seriously deteriorated. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you point out, it's a roll of the dice, we get a storm, we don't. Mm -hmm. right. Cross our fingers and hopefully we'll right. have a moderately dry summer. We don't want the farmers to have a drought, but meanwhile. <laughs> um, so we have this blocked off. And in here, on a normal day, we can get in here and do this work. We don't have any major demolition work going on. We think that the structure itself is sound. And actually, this work done in here is, is going to be put out to the contractors as an option, subject to us doing what we need to do, the contractor <coughs> needs to do, to remove the sediment so that we can expose an inspector's dam. And if it's in fairly good shape, we may not do much, or we may just put a, another surface treatment on it. By you know saying that we're going to have the contractor bid a, a concrete membrane is putting a higher price on it, so that uh, Kristen and others managing the bank account know what we have to work against. So that's what we're going to do there. I mean, that's the management plan. Otherwise, you know, as Simon has pointed out, we're going to be maintaining normal flow. Um, and by cutting down the sheeting here, then we can just maintain the lake level, and there'll be some fluctuations. I mean, as you just pointed out, rainstorms, the lake will go up and <coughs> some down. And, uh, you know, it may fluctuate more than normal because of the way we'll have it, but we will have this property and this property protected against flooding. 
All right, well, the, the overall length of the dam is 82 feet. And then now if you build up a coffer dam and you divert the water through an area that's four feet wide, you're reducing the amount of water, you know, you're, there's less water coming over a wider area. There's more water coming over a smaller area than a real wide area. So that, that water level is going to be higher going through. It's going to be going through a lot faster. Will there be any concern with erosion on, on the outfall? No. You, you know, because down in here, well, I, I say no. I mean, simply because this is going to be falling out on the ledge, which is... Okay. Well... And it should be designed to accommodate that anyways. That's the purpose, right? Once the dam is repaired. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, if it's that, damaged, then you, got you know, you look at other pictures. Equipment. I don't know which ones you want to see, but if you look at you know what you have downstream here, this whole uh, area is sitting essentially on a ledge outcrop. Mm -hmm. So, so you're not removing any sediment other than what you need to just inspect. Correct. There's no like preventative. No, we're just not doing any basically the elevation of the, the lake so bed is going to stay the same. That gray that. area there is that. The sediment area that this thing, yes. this grayness here. Now, this is just a representation of the concrete overlay that, okay. that we'll have. So, you know, the sediment mm -hmm. area itself, uh, you know, we haven't shown that or, you know, really shown the, the extent <coughs> of the excavation. It varies in depth from something like two feet to maybe as much as seven mm -hmm. or eight feet as we get over towards. The sector property. Have you done any testing on that? Because I know the commission itself has had numerous conversations, especially with UMass, about the types of chemicals or um, discharges that have happened into the Mill River which go through this pond. Um, so if you get into removing have you done any borings or cores no. of there? Are you going to? Because we one of the okay, because it may end up having some chemicals in it, stuff. heavy metals in that from UMass, because prior to them putting in a treatment facility, mm -hmm. um, most of that got discharged right into the Mill River and into Lake Warner. So that's, that's been one of our concerns that we have talked to UMass about potentially doing testing or doing some type of sampling in that area because they are the ones who did the discharge. So we haven't necessarily got a lot of feedback from them. Yes? We have two, two sediment samples that were run through contest laboratories for PCBs and VOCs that we could forward to the uh, commission. Okay. Where were those taken? Those were taken upstream, far upstream, maybe, okay. near the edge of, of the lake. They came out pretty clean. So. Okay. I'm good. But I'd be happy to give you copies of those. Okay, yeah. I mean, we would probably want at least one sample done in the area. In the area, or if they excavated a composite sample of what's there. And that not only that protects the owners too, because if it ends up being disposed of somewhere and they find that there are chemicals in it, it goes back on you. So that you want to protect yourselves for that and make sure you're not taking any type of uh, hazardous material um, that's collected there and disposing of it improperly or the contractors disposing of it improperly. How long did it last for? Pardon? How long did it last for? The work? Yeah. Uh, as, as I had mentioned, so the, the low flow period allowed by the, the Corps of Engineers is uh, July 1st to September 30th, so there's a three month window in which the in water work can occur. No, I mean, once you do this, I mean, how long is it the land for the repair? For? Yeah, 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 not <laughs> a couple months, then you gotta do it again. <laughs> well, let me check. Uh, uh, I plan on retiring, <laughs> Uh, after this one? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> you know, we can get into, you know, some sort of textbook answers. I mean, I've seen the economic service life for good, high-quality concrete, which 
we intend to be used here, and there's going to be all kinds of quality assurance and quality control to make sure it is. It is the, you know, expect to see it you know, last for 50 years. I mean, some of the better concrete that you can see there around the dam, uh, I think, goes back to maybe 1947. So that, you know, a 50-year service life, I, I think, is reasonable. I mean, I've worked on some dams where I've actually seen, you know, good concrete last upwards of 100 years. Yeah, but that's good and thick. You're talking about a membrane, right? So it's not this thick, right? Well, actually, you know, a lot of the membrane work that we're doing is uh, going to be a minimum of one foot. Oh, really? Twelve inches. Okay. And just simply because between myself and the other team of consultants working on it, you know, from our own experience, it's going to be heavily reinforced and it's based on, you know, from the standards that we're working against. Because typically, you know, if, okay, if you're thinking about a membrane, it might be six inches or eight inches with one row of steel going through it. But we're using 12 inches and we're using like, two rows of steel. So you're going to have... So it's going to be reinforced concrete. Correct. Water-based or water concrete. E exactly. I mean, we're going to be using, and it's going to be uh, the commercial grade. I mean, it'd be uh, typical, um, you know, some people refer to it as a bridge mix. You know, three-quarter inch stone, minimum of 4,000 PSI. Uh, for getting good durability, we also require what we call entrained air, which gives it a finer bubble texture, and it reduces the permeability, and it increases the durability. So, you know, it's going to be high-grade commercial concrete comparable to what you'd see mass DPW using. A lot of people drive by there, you better use good stuff. <laughs> well, nobody's talked to us about the color of the concrete yet. Yeah, <laughs> it's There's going to be underwater, so play. is it going to really matter? Because <laughs> it's going to be on the upstream side, correct? Yeah. Well, actually, you're going to see some of it exposed on the downstream face, particularly in this area. So what color will it be? <laughs> concrete. <laughs> you're not going to try and blend it into the uh, color of the uh, outcrop, the ledge that's there? Uh, you know, don't get me no, started. You know. I can be about as bad as Ducky on NCIS. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, certain ad mixers don't right. do uh, no, good for the concrete quality. Yeah, and, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a structure, so yep. there's no expectation from, at right. least from me, to yeah, no. color coordinate it. So. Yep. Um, and in looking at this photograph, too, um, is th are these trees in here, the, all of those going to be removed? Um, They're in between the, I guess, roadway and that deflector wall. Deflector wall. So the trees we see in there, do those, will they, you work around them or are those going to be removed? I, believe, um, I mean, because of the, the depth perception issue there, I think um, maybe a couple of those trees would be removed. I'm not okay. sure that they all would be. Mm -hmm. um, I'm you, just thinking in your work area where, depending on where your yeah, equipment's going to you, sit, if it's... If you flip to uh, photograph four, you can actually see a little bit of a different angle. It shows the work area better. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so the ones that are clearly up in above the, yep. the limit of the dam would would be removed. Um, I think the one that is sort of leaning towards the dam, I think that was yeah. one of the ones that would be uh, removed as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the other ones, while they look like mature trees, may yeah. we may have actually counted them as, as shrubs or saplings because I think those are actually in the foreground and it's much smaller EDH like. But that whole area there that we're looking at, that those are going to be removed. Yeah, the, 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 one, the ones that are shown, particularly on the left side here, right. th those are the ones that need to be cut and removed. Because, and then you, you said you're going to remove the root systems too? Yes. Um, so that again, the, the cutting we're <laughs> requesting, or well, we're, we're trying to let, make that happen before April right. 15th so we can avoid impacts to the bat. And then the actual grubbing of the roots, which will um, basically we don't want to have decomposing root systems right. or, or any re-sprout, so th those would have to be, would have to come out. And so you're going to do all the, I mean, are there other parts within the limit of work where you're just going to, you know, get all the woody vegetation up and the roots up, uh, up beyond the work site, the staging site and those two trees? I mean, is there, are there other areas just as a preventative measure that you're going to... No, it's, it's really supposed, it's to be, much supposed to be within 
15 feet of the, of the dam or 25 feet? Okay. Officer of the dam safety likes 25. 25 feet. Okay, so nothing up. So yeah, upstream other than that pine. It's really these these okay. ones here. This pine just is essentially a hazard tree, and then this one here, which is also okay. growing out of that wall there, needs to be taken down. Mm -hmm. um, so unless you have more questions, just if you'd like to just progress through the rest, last two sure. photos. Uh -huh. here. One more. Is, is, is there a monument there somewhere? There is. That is here. It's an existing historical okay. monument to be Way protected. So that's well away from everything and won't be touched. Mm -hmm. um, so just looking at photograph three here, we're on the other side of the dam, looking back at the work area. I apologize, the photo is rather dark, but you can at least see the slope uh, based on you know, the bottom of that fence line coming down to the river, uh, and then the, the trees in that area that will need to be taken down. Um, the species are included in a table in the NOI and consist of um, mainly hardwoods. There's, I believe, at least one or two invasive uh, northern catalpa that are in there uh, that will be removed as well. So there's the benefit so is it of this and all of that, or, or how much of? Yeah, so um, this this one here that's shown as kind of a star shape, I guess, is is that cedar. Oh, so that would need to be removed. Okay. And uh, yep, the ones next to it as well, the the, uh, right. the larger hardwoods would need to be removed. And then there, I mean, there is also um, some shrubs in there. A lot of a lot of invasive stuff. There's honeysuckle. There's uh, multi Florida rose. There's uh, uh, oriental bittersweet. So those mm. things will be removed. Yeah. What's going to be the herbaceous ground cover that you're putting in instead? We haven't identified a specific mix, but something similar to an England wetland plants erosion control mix, something that will be native and will, you know, make sense for the for the area there. Um, so then, photograph four, we've already taken a look at. We're again back on the other side of the dam, looking towards the, the dam and the work area. Uh, flipping to photograph five, you can see that pine leaning over the edge behind the Bosworth's house there. And uh, you can see how the, the concrete training walls uh, really go right along the edge of the river there. Um, photograph six is the that dewatering discharge area. So again, there would be a, uh, referred to as a dirt bag, which is essentially a filter bag, which is enclosed and the, the water is pumped to that and allowed to percolate through that bag. Uh, and then between that and the and the river would be a, a sediment barrier, so essentially a second line of defense, but also just naturally being able to slowly perk along the grass will we'll, uh, we'll remove additional sediment. Is before. that a tree that's leaning there going to be removed? No, or is that's that going to. Okay. So on, on photograph there. six, that's the boat ramp, that's right? The boat ramp. On the bottom, is there's are people still going to have access? They will to the pond if they because you're going to have a hose or two going across it, right? We'll come up with an arrangement where they will have access. Yeah. But yeah. Th basically, these sandbags probably on each side of the hose with a steel plate over it. Yeah. Okay, as long as people, I know right. people still use the pond as recreation, and if they can still mm -hmm. continue to do it, that would be great. No, it's understood that you know, in the course of the construction project, that we want to maintain all functions of the pond to the maximum extent possible. Mm -hmm. Take a boat and back into the pond one time. You put a little bit of fill there so you can go in easy. If it comes like this, then it just drops right off. So okay. if you need a place well, to put something. We'll, we'll see you later on the contract for those ramp improvements. I'm serious. Um, so uh, jumping to photograph seven there, uh, we're looking at the, the training walls here on the right side of the dam. And essentially, that's, that's just shown to see just up around the water line there, you can see where the concrete has deteriorated and broken away. Um, and that's part of the, the reason for the repairs. Uh, photograph 8, again, shows that relic deflector wall, which is really not even attached to the dam anymore. It's a column, essentially, now. And that will be demolished and, and retrieved and brought out of there. And actually, um, ba based on the uh, the removal of the, more calculated, the surface area of, of that thing, and essentially removing that will be an addition of, I think we said, uh, 45 or 47 feet of land underwater will, will be restored uh, by, by moving that, removing that. So, uh, the training wall, you know, farther upstream, like where you're going to remove that pine and stuff, is that, is that owned? I mean, is that owned as part of the dam mm -hmm. or is that the property owner? What's the state of that? Does it need to be repaired? I'm just curious. That's the Blossford's property. It's not. So property. it's not part. Okay. Yeah. And again, that's separated from the the rest of the training wall by this area of stone scour protection here. So it's not 
Right, it's not me. Okay. And that removal of that tree was part of the agreement with the Boisforts that was signed? Mm -hmm. That, because hmm? I think you gave us a copy of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so again, there are there are uh, essentially four properties that are involved in the process mm -hmm. project. There's the Boisforts, the sectors. The green bombs, which is the dewatering discharge, and then uh, the roads, which is the staging area across right. the street. Right. And we've, uh, in, in the NOI, we've provided signatures and MOUs for each of those. Okay. So just to um, <clears throat> get into the actual impacts, temporary impacts uh, predominantly, um, as far as impacts to bank, there's going to be approximately 122 linear feet, and that will be replaced in kind. That is all concrete work. There's no natural bank. There is also the, the stone uh, armoring there, but there's no natural bank that would provide any habitat. Uh, thus, I did not uh, provide a, a habitat uh, analysis for, for those. Um, land underwater is essentially everything below the uh, mean high water line inside of the work limit, inside of that coffer dam. So that's essentially the area that's going to be dewatered temporarily. That's just under 3,000 uh, square feet, 2902. Um, bordering land subject to flooding is approximately 62 square feet. So bordering land subject to flooding extends roughly a foot away from the training wall of the dam, a very, a very small section, maybe, maybe more than that, a couple of feet. But essentially that area is going to be um, a portion of the grading that's going to be required for access. And again, that will all be <coughs> restored in kind. The, the pre-existing grades will be restored there, so there will be no loss in, uh, in flood storage capacity. Have you, have you surveyed that area there so you know what the elevations are, or will that be the contractor doing that prior to? It has been surveyed. Yeah. It has been. So you have existing elevations Correct. so that we know what the what it needs to be restored to. Okay. Indeed. Uh, and then as far as the proposed alteration of the riverfront area, uh, we, we say 6,790, 6, and that, that includes everything, including this area up here. We, we included this section <clears throat> in the work area, A, for taking down this tree because, you know, some sort of equipment will need to get down here to take that and what may cause rutting or something like that. Well, this is all lawn that will be restored. Um, and then the areas up here will be restored, aside from not replacing woody vegetation, will be herbaceous. And then again, the other riverfront area impacts are staging and dewatering, which are expected to be you know, very minor and temporary impacts. So essentially, no permanent impacts to the riverfront area, aside from the change in the vegetation in that one section, which is to comply with the, uh, the dam safety regulations. So that sums up the, uh, the impacts. So what sort of permitting do you need besides from us? Do you have to do something with the Army Corps still? So because the, the project uh, is going to, A, occur within that, that low flow window, mm -hmm. is under 5,000 square feet of impacts, and we're not going to be impacting uh, federally listed species if we can cut the trees before April 15th, mm -hmm. then uh, what will need to be submitted is called a self-verification okay. notification. It used to be called a Category 1 form until they mm -hmm. changed the regs. Uh, so that will be one, and then Morris will be handling the uh, the dam permit, which is chapter 253? Chapter 253 with the Office of Dam Safety, and and we do have to submit a uh, project notification form to the Massachusetts Historic Commission. Plus, um, and we're going to leave it uh, to the contractor because of the way the permits need to be pulled for the project, but because of the work of Massachusetts Route 47, yeah. we'll have to interact with MassDPW for the, the D highway permit. DOT. DOT. Um, usually pretty cooperative and friendly folks. And also, yeah, my train of thought got lost. There's one more. Okay. Town of Hadley, building permit because we're working on oh, walls that are more than four feet high. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's issued to the contractor, so that's where we have to get your order of conditions so that we can go out to bid so the contractor can come back and get some other permits before we can go forward with construction. What, what is your time frame or your timing for the Chapter 253 and the historical permit? We'll be submitting for the Chapter 253 here within the next week or two, and they usually give us about a 60-day turnaround. <coughs> so we submit, let's say, the 20th or 21st of January. You know, by March 21st, we should have our Chapter 253 in hand. Okay. And you won't start any work prior to that, or will you? 
because you're talking about that time frame to cut those trees. So you know, providing we can get permission from some other people uh, to cut those trees, those can be cut uh, because there are certain elements within the dam safety program which don't require a permit. Mm -hmm. We call it maintenance. Right. If we're just cutting trees and we're not breaking the ground, uh, you know, that can go forward without okay. a permit from the Office of Dam Safety. Okay, and the historical? Historical, well, I can't say for sure with Mass Historic, but I doubt that they would uh, hold us up or hold us hostage for, you know, removing some trees. So part of the requirement from the Community Preservation Act funding from Hadley is to have a historic preservation restriction on the dam after it's fixed in order to get reimbursed. And so I'm meeting with the Historic Commission this month on the 25th with their meeting to discuss that preservation restriction. So that will be coordinated with the PNF form. Okay. Okay. Um, so for the, the part we were talking about, how the actual dewatering will be done and what that should be using and stuff. Um, when you put the project out to bid, then part of the requirement will be an explanation by the various contractors of what methodology they're going to use. And you said there'll be some kind of um, paperwork plans or something like that that you'd be able to um, send one by the Conservation Commission just so we know yeah. what's going on. I mean, as well. I, I would want it to be submitted for us to at least look at it, review if we have questions, mm -hmm. to be able to ask someone those questions. Because typically when we approve a project, we have all the information in there mm -hmm. prior to, you know, and if there is going to be additional information from the contractor, we ask them to come submit that to us for review and approval. Just so, I mean, I don't think we've ever really gone overboard to say, no, we don't approve this. We just may have questions that typically would be answered during this process. Right. So I would say that, you know, understanding that, you know, we're <coughs> optimistic that we could perhaps be putting this project out to bid, you know, right at the end of March. Mm -hmm. um, because of the community funds involved, we're going to have to be right. totally compliant with the municipal bidding laws. You know, right. as general law. So we have a 30-day bid time frame. <coughs> um, that said, you know, I would say, okay, book your agenda now for the June meeting. Uh -huh. I'll be here with, mm -hmm. you know, I can mention names, one of my favorite contractors with that plan, you know, mm -hmm. so that come the 4th of July we're have them have them call us as soon as you know who it is have them call Janice and put it on have it put on the agenda so yeah you know because what I could do I mean just for your own information it's not relevant to this project but I could just go back and by email say Janice so, you know, a typical book that I received from the other contractors as to you know what it is and, mm -hmm. you know there's detail what they intend to do and how it'll be yeah. done and what's the, who's the final decider? Is it you or Dam Safety that, you know, is there a possibility that either you or Dam Safety would not agree with one of the contractor's plans? Well, okay. we're not going to be asking the contractor as they bid the project to furnish details. Oh, okay. Essentially, it's going to be understanding that we are getting cost quotations from okay. qualified contractors <coughs> and compliant with the Massachusetts bid line. I mean, oh, okay. It's going to be the lowest qualified. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, you know, so. Are you pre-qualifying people for this type of project? Do they have to show that they've done this work before so that you're not getting someone yes. who's never done damn work? <laughs> no, we can request that they, you know, give us at least five typical projects and mm -hmm. okay. for the, the person that comes in with the most attractive cost quotation. Right. You know, those references will be checked. And, uh, mm -hmm. Typically, the contractors don't invest a lot of effort if they don't feel like they're qualified. Right. So. Okay. Um, now, you mentioned U.S. Fish and Wildlife had no concerns. Do you have something from them, or did you submit something 
to us saying that, or? Uh, I did, it, it does state so in, in okay. the notice of intent. Um, because <coughs> this, this change, the listing of the northern longyear bat, which recently came on in April, they're completely inundated with, with requests for right. okay. guidance. <laughs> so uh, I sent an email and uh, gave a phone call, left a message, and received a phone message back um, from Ms. Aunt Van Ottingen, who uh, I believe Janice is familiar with, so could mm -hmm. check in with if you had any doubt about that. But she, she left a message, which I unfortunately <laughs> don't think I could. I may have saved it. <laughs> I, I will, right. I'll see if I have it. But mm -hmm. basically, because these are tree roosting species, um, <laughs> the, the concern would be to cut the trees while they're in, in dormancy in right. caves or wherever right. else. And then the other concern would be, is there other habitat that they can use when they come out? So given that we're not in a highly urbanized area where we're cutting down the only trees. That's why she was not concerned. Basically, we'll be yeah. avoiding them when they're in the ground, and then they'll have plenty of places to go and come back. And there are studies that have shown that they will. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're waiting on um, Natural Heritage official letter mm -hmm. and the check, mm -hmm. and I don't know if there's anything else or not. Um, I didn't have it. The the only <coughs> for your purposes, like we, we discussed before about the low flow work. Um, do you have some type of contingency plan? Should we have a very wet summer? Because we've had that, where farmers like water, but we've had way too much water. I think <laughs> last year or two years ago. Two had. years ago. Two years ago. Extremely wet. So will you have a contingency plan for that? I mean, if we... <laughs> well, you know, extremely wet. Mm -hmm. uh, hard to, you know, just get into, you know, the hydrology, you know, the, how the watershed will behave. And, um, as I said, there's, you know, back to, you know, the phase two, it, Work on the face of the dam itself, I think, can be done fairly quickly. And I'm going to say the contingency is hopefully, even though it'll be a wet summer, that we may have you know, a, a dry week or you know, maybe just a dry three days, mm -hmm. just so that we can have you know, enough time to pump it out and, mm -hmm. and do what it is. And okay, I'm just good enough to see some sampling before we right. judge it out. But um, it's the kind of thing where. They do the work on the concrete membrane. I mean, once the concrete sets for a minimum amount of time, like a day, mm -hmm. uh, the concern so. about you know flow over the concrete is mm -hmm. not as severe. So, you know, my sense is um, wet summer, dry summer, and I think the project can go. So forward. it's it's relatively for the concrete work a narrow window of time that you need. You don't need weeks to right, do the right. concrete work. And, and actually, I mean, the concrete work that will be going on at the abutments, we can put up higher coffer dams. Okay. So, you know, we don't have that risk of inundation there. To maintain the lower coffer dam would be where we need to provide that downward capacity to release that flow. Okay. 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 So, I'm looking at, we'll need to continue. Just to confirm, if I could, so the, the outstanding items that you'll be needing before we could close are, are just the natural heritage response and the checks. As far as as, as, far as the, so, the sediment sampling, that would be something that you'd want to see before the actual removal. Yeah, we of we would yes. probably yeah. want, we put things in as an in order condition, of conditions. Okay. The, you know, what I'm looking at that I would want to see in an order would be the sampling, um, you know, the design of whoever the contractor is, the, the design or type of coffer dam, um, materials used, the um, what your planting mix, replanting mix would be, consist of. Um, I know you, you threw one out there, but we typically want to have specifics on that, so prior to, um, you know, in one meeting it would be nice to have 
once you have your contractor on board, have all that information come in to us, and then we can just close it, you know, put everything to bed. So. Are there any other questions from the commission? Okay. I'll need the colored plan since it was this? Yeah, since it was used for that. Um, can I give it to you after the next hearing? Or would you like to post it? I'm, I'm happy to color on Coloring is the best part of the job, so I'm happy to <laughs> Just because it, it, it shows what was represented to Absolutely. us and stuff. Sure. So slightly different than what we've already got, which are just the plain copies or our own colored copies. So. Sure. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I need a motion to continue to February 9th. I'll make a motion to continue this hearing to the February 9th meeting. Okay. Uh, do I have a second? Okay, Steve, second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And any abstentions? Okay, so we'll see you all February 9th. <laughs>